Welcome to uh, the online devotion for the week of March 30th to April the 3rd. Words of hope and inspiration for the residents and the staff in the Bethany Group. I'm Brian Crucial. I'm one of the chaplains with the Bethany Group. Thanks for tuning in today. This week we're sliding from the month of March to the month of April, and like the old saying, in some ways March came in like a lamb and kind of going out like a lion. I hope you've experienced some of the lamb this month, this past month, and I hope that you've experienced some of God's peace. Pastor Kevin, over the last couple of devotions, has been encouraging us to put our trust in God during a tumultuous time like ours. Today, I want to add to his encouragement by inviting us to experience joy, a joy that comes from God. So again, welcome, and let me share two scripture selections with us. First is from the 90th Psalm, and this is a psalm written by Moses. Moses was someone who experienced, who lived through a pandemic, and it took the lives of many of his friends. And throughout his life, Moses, Moses learned to pour out all of his worries and desires to God. So here are some of his words. Lord, you've been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like the watch in the night. Our days may come to 70 years, maybe 80 if our strength endures, yet the best of them are often filled with trouble and sorrow. For they quickly pass away and then we fly away. So teach us to number our days so that we can gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will this be? How, have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And just one verse from Psalm 94. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. I invite you to follow along or sing along a hymn of confidence. How firm a foundation. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said, to you who for refuge to Jesus hath fled? Fear not, I am with thee, O oh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God, and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand Upheld by my righteous, omnipotent hand The soul that on Jesus hath leaned for repose I will not, I will not desert to his foes that soul, though all hell should endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. In our local newspaper this past week, 
The editor included some light-hearted humor to cheer the readers in the midst of so many gloomy reports. This is the time in history when we can save the human race by lying on the couch in front of the television, doing nothing else. So let's not mess this up. <laughs> I've yet to decide where to spend the next couple weeks of my vacation. I'm torn between my living room and my bedroom. Or <laughs> now that we have everyone washing their hands properly, next week, turn signals. Or one lady asked, how long is this social distancing thing supposed to go on? My husband keeps trying to get into the house. And now, for those who are working from home, legislation has just passed in Parliament. 8 p.m. is now the official time to change from your daytime pajamas to your nighttime pajamas. <laughs> Maybe it's time for another song. Join me, won't you? Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. In Psalm 90, Moses prayed, Make us glad for as many days as we've been afflicted. And in Psalm 94, we heard these words, When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Gladness? Joy? Can we really experience these in the midst of our worries about a pandemic? Maybe it depends on how we understand joy. I've, I've heard the following distinctions made between comedy, humor, and joy. Comedy is contrived or created to make us laugh. Think sitcoms with laugh tracks so viewers know when to laugh. And then there's humor. Humor is something that happens naturally, but it surprises us or catches us off guard, and it causes us to react with a smile or chuckle or a really good belly laugh. And sometimes this is cultural. The, the lighthearted humor from our local newspaper this past week relates to what we're going on, we're going, that is going on in our culture. An acquaintance of mine from Kenya, East Africa, once told us about, in his culture, a story about a squirrel chasing an elephant up a tree would result in sustained belly laughs in his culture. And then, then there is joy that we discover in Scripture. This joy is a gift from God. It is produced by God's Spirit. It's called the fruit of God's Spirit. So, and we don't generate it. We don't crank it out on our own. Because this is from God, it is more than a passing emotion. Because God is eternal, unchanging. And this joy is deeply rooted in, in God's character. It is the conviction that God is trustworthy and true in all of our circumstances. And it is that deep trust that sometimes will put a smile on our face or even allow us to laugh at our circumstances. 
and it renews our strength. I like how Nehemiah puts it, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I pray this kind of joy for you, and I hope that my life exhibits the same kind of joy as well. The well-known Supreme Court Justice of the 20th century, Oliver Wendell Holmes, once observed, I might have entered the ministry if certain clergy persons that I knew had not looked and acted more, so much like undertakers. <laughs> as a third century man was anticipating death, he penned these last words to a friend. We live in a bad world, an incredibly bad world, but I have discovered in the midst of it a quiet and holy people who have learned a great secret. They have found a joy, which is a thousand times better than any pleasure of our old sinful life. They are despised and persecuted, but they care not. They are masters of their souls. They have overcome the world. These people are the Christians, and I am one of them. May we all discover, be filled with, and share this kind of joy, the kind of joy that only God can give. Just before we pray together, maybe we could sing one more song together, Sweet Hour of Prayer. As your trusting children, O oh God, we turn to you. We do it every day, sometimes many times a day, but right now we want to ask for your mercy for us and for our world, so sorely tried by this coronavirus pandemic. And we do this together, Christians of every church and community, people of every faith, of every tradition, of every age, language, nation. We, we pray for the sick and their families, for our health workers and those who help them, for the authorities, for law enforcement agencies, first responders, volunteers, for the ministers, 
of faith communities. Today, we entrust ourselves with full confidence into your loving hands, O God, and with one heart and one soul we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey, it's been great to be with you today. May the joy of the Lord be your strength.